All right, um, so we're gonna get started. I um, wanna thank everyone for coming out tonight on this snowy evening. I know you didn't have to travel too far, um, but it is a uh, nice view to come out and join us. Um, I'm Jamie Webb, I'm the assistant planner for the city. Um, I am joined tonight by Diane Rossini, Dan Murphy, and Greg Nettleman from the DPW, and Julie Busa, who's our engineer consultant for, um, from Fuss and O'Neill. So um, we're here tonight to discuss the proposed green infrastructure and streetscape improvements for Cherry Street, Mount Tom Ave, and Lux Ave. Um, we're going to discuss some background information about the project and go over the meeting format and then turn over to our consultant for a brief presentation and that will be followed by a Q&A. I just wanna remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded. Um, please keep yourself muted until you're called on um, in the Q&A uh, at the end of the presentation. In case this meeting is interrupted, um, we will end the meeting early and try to resume using the same Zoom link uh, about five minutes later. Uh, you'll see on the slide, we have a project website um, easthamptonma.gov slash MVP. Um, on the website, you can uh, find more information about the project as well as sign up for our email list if you'd like to be kept up to date about the project and other meetings um, status as we go forward with this project. Um, you can sign up on the, uh, sign up for the email updates or you can email us at planning at easthamptonma.gov. Um, so I'm just gonna brief go over some of the background and timelines for the project. Uh, we are, um, why are we looking at the Cherry Street, um, Lux Ave and Mount Tom Ave neighborhood? Um, so in 2018, uh, the city completed the integrated water resources management plan which is an attempt to um, manage the water supply, wastewater and stormwater systems holistically uh, in order to coordinate management and development of these resources and the land and water um, surrounding these resources uh, to maximize uh, economic and social benefit while minimizing impact on the environment. Through this uh, process, the Cherry Street infrastructure drainage was identified as a top priority for the city. In 2019, we completed the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Planning Process, uh, which is an attempt to identify climate-related impacts and vulnerabilities and mitigate them before they become uh, catastrophic problems. Again, through this, proce this planning process, the stormwater drainage, um, the Cherry Street area was identified as a key priority as well as creating uh, a green infrastructure master plan for the city. Uh, in 2020, we applied for and received a grant from the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Action Grant Program to uh, design and complete permitting for uh, the Cherry Street infrastructure, green infrastructure and streetscape improvements. Uh, and for the green infrastructure master plan. Uh, what we're gonna be looking at today is a conceptual design for the drainage area at the Eastern end of Cherry Street, Mount Tom Ave and Lux Ave. Um, after, after the meeting tonight, um, we're gonna work with our consultants to complete these conceptual plans to create um, construction drawings and uh, to apply for um, to complete the permitting and then we will be applying for um, the next round of the Municipal Vulner Vulnerability Preparedness Action Grant uh, for implementation for construction of the drainage and streetscapes improvements as well as um, working with the Community Development Block Grant Program to apply for uh, the sewer, to upgrade the sewer and water infrastructure um, in, these, in this area as well. Um, if all goes well, we'll be awarded um, in late summer of 2021, and we'd expect to begin construction um, in 
the spring of 2022. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our consultant, Julie. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. So um, again, Jamie described this in words, but just to show you the area that we're focusing on in this current grant, um, it is the eastern ends of Mount Tom Ave and Cherry Street and the portion of Lux that connects between them. And the reason for that is that this grant was originally um, kind of framed around the drainage area that contributes to the outfall that's um, back in the Brickyard Brook Conservation Area. So all of the storm drains in this um, portion of the city, in this portion of the neighborhood, drain to this existing outfall. And that was the reason that we made this sort of the, the boundary of this particular grant, because we were framing it around um, questions of climate change and precipitation. So we'll, we'll come back to sort of the longer term vision for the rest of the streets and neighborhood as well. That's um, particularly where we're focusing at this moment. So the goals of this project, um, as we've already kind of alluded, are focused initially around building resiliency for increased future precipitation. So because this is the state's climate resiliency program, we're really thinking about the fact that we're expecting to see larger storms in the coming years. We're already seeing patterns where, um, you know, rather than seeing kind of nice even distribution of rainfall throughout the seasons, we're getting these big intense storms and that can create problems for our drainage infrastructure. So we're looking at ways of collecting and infiltrating stormwater in place rather than um, having it be sort of um, combined into concentrated areas where it's uh, emptied into our outfalls like it currently is. We're also thinking about the fact that we're expecting to have higher temperatures and in particular um, longer periods of hot days in the summer. So we're thinking about tree cover and shade and how we can add um, enhanced shade cover to the neighborhood. Um, there's also an opportunity here to beautify the neighborhood and increase safety uh, and increase walkability. So these top couple of pictures, um, I'm sure you're familiar with this uh, phenomenon that happens on Cherry Street where there are a lot of utility poles um, and hydrants that are kind of right in the middle of the sidewalk and that pro, um, are obstacles to people trying to pass by. Um, this is a, a picture that came off of Google Street View, but this is a site that I've seen commonly in the neighborhood where because the sidewalks aren't in very good condition and they're pretty narrow and they have these obstacles, you actually tend to see people walking in the street rather than on the sidewalks. So we're looking to improve that walkability and access for everyone. Um, remove those constrictions along the sidewalk, and uh, also to address the old and failing infrastructure that's uh, currently in the neighborhood. And so you'll see if you've, if you've looked at any of the other streets nearby where the city has already been making improvements, um, you'll notice that they're focusing on making things ADA accessible. Um, and we're looking also at ways of using green infrastructure, which I'll get to in a minute, to um, both add some aesthetic appeal and also to create these spaces in the streetscape that double as places for uh, stormwater to be managed on site. So if you've received the mailings that we've been sending out, um, you've had a little bit of an introduction to green infrastructure, but I wanna talk a little bit more about what that means and what some of the particular types of practices are that we're considering for the neighborhood. So we are looking at um, this suite of practices and systems that really allow us to reduce the amount of stormwater that is running off of our hard surfaces and making its way into the drainage pipes and ultimately to those concentrated outfall points at our streams by instead uh, using vegetation and soils and natural processes to allow the water to infiltrate into the ground. And as many of you probably know, if you've done any digging in your yards, we have really sandy soils in these neighborhoods. Um, and because of that, we have a lot of opportunity to infiltrate water rather than send it out to our streams. And that uh, has a lot of benefits for water quality, um, as well as just the longevity of our infrastructure. And so we're looking at a couple of different types of practices. There's some examples here in the photos. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, tree box filters, which I'll talk about more in a minute and then some variations on these types of air retention uh, 
or rain garden type practices. So bioretention planters uh, are something that you saw call outs for in the mailer. And really what this is, is uh, an opportunity to create space along the streetscape where you have uh, inlets from the street through a cut in the curb, allow water to come in. So rather than going straight down into a catch basin, into a drain, um, it comes into this surface practice. And this area is actually a place for sediment to accumulate um, so that any, any sand or grit that might be on the road uh, or any other larger debris would come into this area that's easy to clean out. And then when the water uh, starts to build up in there, it overflows into this planting area. And the planting areas can take a lot of different forms. Um, in this example, we have some, some trees and shrubs. You can also have examples um, that are grasses or perennial plants. So you can have a lot of different options for what sorts of plantings um, occur in these spaces. But they also, as you can see, create separation between the sidewalk and the street which makes, um, you know, increases safety so that you don't have the opportunity for cars to be quite as close to people on the sidewalk. And there's then um, the material that underlays these planters is engineered to allow water to soak in uh, and infiltrate into the ground. And then if there's any excess, say in a really large storm, there are overflow structures that allow any extra water to be returned to the drainage pipes and to flow um, as they do now, essentially, out to the outlet at the end of the street. And you can see in this bump out uh, at the top, there are uh, multiple shapes that this can take. So this is an example sort of more at a corner where you're allowing the water to come in at one end uh, again and flow into sort of a different shaped practice, but um, with a very similar function. This next image just shows you a lot of different examples of what this can look like. Um, as I said, we can have all different types of plantings, and um, these are just various examples of what this could look like in uh, a streetscape. So you can see examples where there are more shrubs, you can see examples with small trees, um, examples that are more focused around grasses and flowers. So really the, the aesthetic properties here are, um, there's a lot of options and that's still very much open to discussion in terms of exactly what this might look like. We also included here a local example. Um, you may not realize that we have similar types of green infrastructure practices already functioning at the East Hampton High School. And um, you may not even realize that's what they are when you're looking at them because these ones were designed to be very low maintenance and um, just kind of blend in with the lawn that's around them. You can see uh, in one of the islands in the parking area there are these cuts that allow water to flow in there's this depressed area here in the middle that water collects. And then you don't see it in this image, but like I was describing, um, there's an overflow that allows any excess water to be returned to the underground drainage system. So that just gives you an example. And if you wanted to go and take a look at these, you could actually go and check them out at the high school in the parking lot. Other type of practice that we included in the concept that you saw in the mailer is what's called a tree box filter. And uh, this graphic shows them kind of in a row, but we are applying them more in this single instance. And basically it's the, the same kind of principle where you're creating an inlet for stormwater to come in off of the road uh, and you're creating space for that water to accumulate and pond briefly and then soak into the ground. And as it's doing so, it's watering the tree and providing um, additional shade and uh, cover for the neighborhood as well. And oftentimes uh, these have a grate on top so that uh, it just protects them from having anything fall into there or um, having it be any kind of trip hazard. That, uh, can be, there's different designs so you don't necessarily have to have a grate like that. But that's a, a common um, design that we like to use. I want to turn now to the specifics of Cherry Street. And again, um, hopefully most of you have had the opportunity to take a look at these images already. So this is uh, a picture of the existing conditions. The street currently varies between about 20 to 21 feet wide on Cherry, and it's very similar on Mount Palm. And the sidewalk, depending on where you measure, is anywhere from about five to five and a half feet wide. 
Um, at some places it's narrower because plants have kind of grown over it, but if you were to find the actual asphalt, it's about five to five and a half feet. And one of the things you notice is that, uh, as I said earlier, we have a lot of utility poles, uh, especially along Cherry, that are situated kind of in the middle of the sidewalk, so it makes it difficult to pass around. If you, um, particularly if you have a stroller, if you had someone in a wheelchair, it'd be very difficult to pass in certain places. Also notice that there's very little separation um, between the sidewalk and the street. Uh, the curb is almost non-existent in a lot of places, uh, and that does pose some potential safety concerns in terms of it being very easy for vehicles to kind of veer up onto the sidewalk and, um, you know, either have potential for injury or accident, or also just be an additional block to people being able to access the sidewalk and be able to walk along. In our rendering of the proposed conditions, um, you'll see that we showed the existing edge of road here in pink. So you can see that the sidewalk side, um, nothing really changes. The edge of the sidewalk would be where we currently have it. Uh, the sidewalk would remain five feet wide, but it would be replaced with concrete. Um, and you now have curbing on both sides, which creates that nice, oops, excuse me, nice separation uh, between the road and the, the sidewalk and uh, people's lawn edge. And we have our bioretention planters on this side. You can see an example where you have the, the inlet from the street. Here's that four bay area that makes it very easy to clean out any accumulated material. You got your planter area. Um, another planter here on the opposite side. Uh, and I wanna emphasize that all of the precise locations of these planters are still somewhat in flux. So um, that's one of the things that we're going to discuss a little bit tonight is sort of how we make the final decisions about where we put these. Um, you can see an example here of a tree box filter. Again, there'd be an inlet here for water to come in from the road. And then you've got the tree and what you don't see is the space below for water to infiltrate. And another thing I want to point out is that the roadway would stay 20 feet wide. So you really wouldn't see any change in the available space for driving. Um, and you would still have the opportunity to park along the street as people do now. Uh, in addition, we've created these spaces at various points along the way where you actually have a little bump out that allows cars that are parking on the street to get a little bit further off the road. So that actually um, would make it a little bit easier to pass and to navigate at those locations. And when we were looking at uh, locations for citing these various green infrastructure practices, we went back through all of the aerial imagery from the last several years and tried to pay close attention to where we know that people are using a lot of street parking uh, and to make sure that uh, you're not losing any of those opportunities. Uh, and we tried to create these little bump outs at the places where we think that they'll be most heavily used. So that brings us to the overview, uh, and we'll have an opportunity during the question and answer to come back to any of these images that people want to discuss more. Um, but you should have also seen a copy of this, hopefully, in the mailing that went out. So this, again, is that area that's defined um, by the, the drainage area and that's being funded through our grant. So you can get a sense here, um, all along where we have green are suggested locations for the bioretention planters, uh, little trees that are added are Central locations for the tree box filters. Uh, you can see also at the end of the street, uh, this is not so much our focus tonight, but these are the proposed um, improvements to the outfall itself to correct the erosion that's happened in the conservation area and um, make sure that that is stable going forward so that it doesn't continue to erode the slope towards the houses at the end of Cherry. Uh, and you can also see here the various places where we've created those little parking bump outs. This is an example uh, where on Mount Tom, um, there's already parking going on at the edge of the street. And it's really, um, it's kind of a dirt strip there because it's not paved, but there's no grass because it's used frequently for parking. So we, we consider that a, a good opportunity to formalize that parking a little bit and give people a, a better surface there that's easier to maintain. Likewise, in front of this cluster of homes, uh, we know that people are parking here, so we created that space. Um, you'll see it along Cherry as well at various places where we've created these little bump outs for uh, safer parking where you can get a little bit further off the road. So I've got um, 
here we've also got blow-ups of each of those two sections of the street so we can look at these in more detail. Uh, I won't go into detail on those now except to point out also um, where we are considering how to circumvent those utility poles are currently kind of in the middle of the sidewalk. So we've either created a way to um, bypass around those by bumping out the sidewalk, or there is the potential to also think about relocating some of those uh, utility poles to the edge of the grass so that they would be out of the way um, entirely. So again, we can come back to either of these images um, when we open to discussion. Before we go to that, I just want to talk in case anybody um, needs to leave before the end. I did want to talk briefly about next steps. So as Jamie mentioned at the beginning, we would like everyone to submit any additional comments that you might have uh, to the planning at easthamptonma.gov email address. And because of the grant timeline, uh, which has to be completed by the end of June, in order to keep things moving, we're asking that any comments be submitted by March 1st. Um, we'll obviously continue to take any input that you have and try to work that in, but um, we can do the most with your comments if you submit them uh, within this next week or so. We may also be asking uh, for more information from you to support future grants that Jamie was mentioning. So um, there's a possibility that we may need to complete an income survey to help document uh, the conditions in the neighborhood for some of the grants that we're pursuing. Um, we're also in the process of hiring a community liaison who will be funded through this grant project and uh, will serve uh, in the role of communicating back and forth with the neighborhood uh, about the project. So they may reach out to you for other information. And uh, I'll also note that that position is still open and uh, is posted on the city website. So if anyone has particular interest in um, being part of the communication around this project, you might wanna check that out. And we're also asking that if you would like to receive additional information and updates, that you sign up uh, using, well, we were gonna have a link in the chat, but the chat is closed down right now. So if you go to the project website, um, you'll be able to uh, find the link and sign up uh, to receive those updates by providing your email address. And in terms of what's coming next, uh, we are pursuing, as Jamie said, funding for construction of the Cherry Street portion. And uh, the intent, although the design is focused around the east end of both Mount Tom and Cherry Street and uh, Lux Avenue uh, for sort of to be the most efficient in terms of construction. Cherry Street would be queued up as the first piece to be completed and we would extend this design basically to the entirety of the street. So rather than do just half of the street, we'd be looking for funding to um, make these improvements along the full length of Cherry Street. And the tentative construction, if the funding comes through as we're hoping it will, would be for a spring 2022 construction timeline. So with all of that in mind, I'm going to open it up to questions and discussion. Uh, like I said, we can go back to any of these graphics if people wanna look at specific areas or talk in more detail about anything. And I think um, Diane is going to kind of manage the question process. Yeah, I'm Diane. I am a staff and engineer, engineer with the DPW. Um, if you could just, um, I mean, we can start with if you just have a question, unmute yourself and um, ask it. If that gets a little too um, crazy, I will um, ask you just to raise your hand and, and, and I'll manage it that way. I have one question as far as the trees on the power line side has anybody are these like dwarf trees or are we why are we putting trees underneath power lines yeah we're looking at trees we actually discussed this earlier um it would be trees that would not grow as tall they're they're okay. made for going under power lines so we're definitely we've we've kept that in mind and thank you yep um Hi, I'm Justin. I don't have a question. I just have a quick comment. Um, I think this all looks awesome. Um, I live on Cherry Street and uh, in the zone here and the design just looks so great and it's very exciting. Um, and I think it will, I, you know, I have a young toddler. I think it will slow down traffic a little bit, just like psychologically, like people see the nice trees, they'll kind of take 
uh, take in the, the air a little bit more. I think this is just really exciting. So thanks so much for bringing this to us. It's, it's a cool project. Thank you. Glad you guys are excited, hopefully. I am uh, curious about the whole planting uh, aspect of this. Um, are you going to maintain those plants or how is that going to be arranged? Because some of us had brown thumbs <laughs> and we'll have a problem keeping them alive. So I'm just curious as to how, how you're going to maintain that aspect of it. Julie, do you want to go into that a little bit? Sure. So as I kind of mentioned earlier, um, specifically what sort of plantings we're looking at is still an open question. Um, but whatever we go with, the idea would be to choose something that's very low maintenance. Um, obviously, one of the benefits of this kind of um, planting and planter is that you have a source of water that's coming in. Um, and we would choose plants that are suited to the kind of conditions where they can get a lot of water in one day uh, and then be pretty drought tolerant in the next couple of weeks when there's no rain. So they're, they're flexible in terms of that. So they would kind of take care of themselves in terms of watering once they're established. Um, and we would choose things that, that really don't need a lot of maintenance other than that. So really the only thing that you would see in terms of regular maintenance would be kind of your typical end of season leaf pickup um, because you wanna clear those leaves out of there so that they're not piling up and accumulating kind of the same way that you would do with, with anywhere else in your yard but we would really be um, focusing on things that are easy to maintain and don't require a lot of effort. That said, for people who are excited about gardening um, and have green thumbs, uh, there's an opportunity here for you to add things to your planters. If there's one in front of your house, that would um, kind of be fun for you and, and tie in with the aesthetic of your yard. So there's really quite a lot of flexibility and we're happy to talk with people about um, you know, what they think would work best. As it happens, I have a lot of, of river rock uh, on edging my property. Is, is that, wouldn't that work as well as, as planting in collecting water and allowing it to sink into the ground? Yeah, you can certainly integrate rock with um, the planting. So typically you wanna have some kind of vegetation in there because it anchors the soil and adds to um, the ability for it to, to soak up water. But I have a rain garden in my yard. I actually live over on Maple Street and I, I do have a lot of river rock kind of integrated along with the plantings and it, it can make for a nice aesthetic as well. So yeah, that's, that's definitely an option. Okay, thank you. And um, just wanna mention um, the four bays are basically gonna be managed like a catch basin. Um, you know, I think we'll do like the normal cleanings that we do for catch basins with the four bays as part of our yearly maintenance. And you know, I clean out the leaves in front of mine if you know, if it, if the catch basins cover. So if, if you do that kind of thing in front of your house, it's, it's going to be maintenance like, like a catch basin top would be now. So. We have a property on Cherry Street and we live on the sidewalk side. Um, we have a really awesome view of the mountain from our big window out front. So will we have some say in whether, you know, a tree goes out front of our house, hopefully? Cause I, you know, I don't wanna have that view blocked by a tree. Um, basically, I, that's one of the reasons we're having this meeting. Um, we, we are willing to take into consideration what you do want or do not want in front of your house. Um, especially I would, those are one of the things that if you could um, send that to the DPW that or the planning link that we have um, with your address, um, that's something that we'll forward to Julie and they'll keep that in mind when they're doing the design. And so, so you guys didn't mark our uh, driveway on it. I assume you'll catch that at some point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but that good catch. <laughs> what is just out of curiosity, what's your house number? 37, Sherry. Okay. Got a double wide um, driver. Thank you. Thank um, you. Can, can I ask only because, you know, it's winter and it's snowing and how is the snow removal looking like for that with all the basins and everything? Uh, you mean for this project, like, or for Cherry Street right now? Like how is it going to change? Like going going forward, like can there be a lot of snow banks in those areas? Like, 
like will people have to remove the snow from that section as well? Because there won't be plants in the winter, right? So there's yeah. going to be snow covered. Is that how it's going to be? Julie, do you want to? I think we you brought that up. And I may ask my colleague Sean, who's here as well, to jump in. Um, but in general, I mean, it, it's it's most ideal if the the planters aren't used for storing snow because then when things start to melt, they're available to accept rainwater. But obviously on a tight street like this, um, it's not going to be possible to, to completely keep snow out of them. And um, definitely you're going to allow whatever snows to, snow falls to stay there. Uh, but we may try to, um, when it's possible, we may try to keep snow piles um, outside of the planter areas to the extent possible. But um, I anticipate that we are going to see snow piling up there. Sean, do you have any experience with how this tends to play out in actual implementation? Um, can you can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to say that one of the things that you know we're going to do as part of our design is make sure that obviously there is still going to be an existing drainage system in the roadway. Um, obviously, that'll function for your bigger storms, and I think that'll also kind of be somewhat of a fail safe in the event that, yeah, I mean, this is a tight street, and when they do plow, you know, I think some of the, some of the snow is going to go into these planters, so there may be periods of time that you're going to have snow on the planters, they may be iced up a little bit, and, and, and then that'll be pretty much the situation where I, I would see that these um, systems in the street would actually function in the event that there are times when these these planters are full of snow. So I, I would say that again, these planters are being designed to handle, you know, let's say the water quality storm event, and then in excess of that, you know, you, you, we're going to have overflows. And in certain cases here, I think what we'll have to have some catch basins in the roadway still that will still function and operate um, under winter conditions in the event that these are full of snow. I don't know. I don't know if that does that help a little. Yeah, so looking at like looking at the kind of snow that we have out on the streets right now, you would definitely have snow piled up in um, some of these planters in this condition because there's there's too much snow out there to not have that happen, um, and that wouldn't be a, a problem in terms of their functioning long term. I just want to say that, um, again, to echo some of the praise that this looks really wonderful, um, just looking at this rendering right now. And I was excited to hear too that you're hoping to get funding to continue this all the way down Cherry Street. Um, that was my only concern was that a third of the street was going to look beautiful and the other two thirds were going to still have um, very janky sidewalks. So I'm glad that you have hopes to continue it all the way down. Thank you all so much. Hello. Um, no questions. Go ahead. Okay, sorry, I wasn't sure if I was. Gonna no, it's good. Um, yeah. I, did was there also a possibility of that it will be extended down to the end of Mount Tom Avenue as well, or just Cherry Street? As long as we can get the funding. Um, mm -hmm. So the funding that we go for this year or next round is it's going to be for Cherry Street. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, any plans that we come up with um design plans we do want to at some point um you know put into action into construction um and also as part of this grant um this isn't the focus of this meeting we're doing a uh, great infrastructure um basically citywide report and that's coming up with um a lot of um, general details of how we can implement this through the city um specific locations and just like general um instead of using um, gray, we call it gray infrastructure, the pipes in the ground, all that, using some more of this green infrastructure. So it, it kind of more of like a integrating that into the rest of Cherry Street and um, and the rest of Mount Tom Ave and um, everywhere else in the city, you know, as, as we go forward. I live at um, 73 Mount Tom, so I'm very excited and I'm very uh, about this plan. Thank you so much planning department for working on this. And Diane, I think I went to a green infrastructure workshop yep. with you at the PVBC yep. last year. So to like see this now happening on my street is like really <laughs> exciting. <laughs> um, so I just wanna echo other people's excitement about it. And I'll, that was a good point that Melissa brought up. So I will, cause I also live on the um, 
side of Mount Tom Ave where I have a view of Mount Tom. So I'll just kind of look to see where my view might be cut off from my porch. But um, the sidewalks, I just kind of thought they were like, this is it, we're stuck with these bad sidewalks. So this is really exciting and all the green life coming to the street as well. So thank you. Thank you. And um, I wanna reiterate, um, if anyone has any specific um, requests as far as their, their house, um, Obviously, we can't integrate everything in necessarily, but we will definitely take it into consideration when we're doing this. And if you could just email it to that planning department email um, as, as soon as possible, hopefully by March 1st, if you can. Um, if not, um, as Julia said, we will still be reading these going forward. It's just the later and later we get, um, the harder and harder it will be to put it into a plan that we can get done by, by June, so. I have another question. if. That's okay. Yep. Um, so if I understand this correctly, I'm looking at the Cherry Street picture. Are you cutting two feet into the properties on the side without the sidewalk? Like, are you moving the road um, over two feet? We are in some locations. Um, it will still stay within the city right of way. Um, it might not look like it on, you know, our day to day, but basically there is a right of way in the road and the road is within the right of way. Um, a lot of times that includes some grassy area or a sidewalk, but we are not planning on um, going out of any of the right of way to do this. Because a lot of those houses on that side are very close <laughs> to the yeah. road already. Yeah. So a lot of things are <laughs> in general very close. <laughs> this is a very tight street and yes. uh, we tried to implement what we can in such a small footprint. So thank you. Um, you know, one thing that I was thinking, uh, I'm sure given, uh, you know, the, the proximity to all of this to the, you know, Mutterfield and Brickyard Brook and all that, um, that you've probably had some sort of communications with the Conservation Trust. And um, I with was- the Squamic? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking uh, when it comes time for the planters, it might not be a terrible idea to reach out to them because I, I attended a presentation they did a, a year or two back about various sorts of plants that were good for the native wildlife and pollinators and and whatnot and they had there was some really interesting stuff so if the city was engaging in an exercise of planting a whole lot of plants they might have some great ideas um i'm sure this might be something that you've already thought of but just figured i'd make a plug yeah we've definitely been working with that well we haven't um done too much right now because we've been focusing on getting ready for the streetscape side of this meeting but we have been reaching out with Pasquamic especially related to the outfall but um it's a, good to know that they were looking at plantings too so we'll um we'll see what they um have for suggestions on that yeah and we'll definitely be looking at, at native species um along what you were saying so that it's because that that helps both with drought tolerance um and tolerance to salt and other conditions that we might see, but also um, as you were suggesting, it's it's good for wildlife, good for pollinators and um, other species. So that's definitely part of our consideration as well. Awesome, thanks so much. Are there any other questions out there, comments? I guess <laughs> me again. <laughs> is this like a done deal? Like, is this definitely happening or is it it's all dependent on if you get the grant it happens um if we get the grant it happens so it's just um basically um these were one-year grants and there was no way we were going to be able to design permit and construct all in one year mm -hmm. so um it's through the same program that we're trying to at least get the drainage side of this um we will be going as um jamie alluded to we will be going for a grant for other underground infrastructure is is part of this um, in a, under a different grant program and um, so that hopefully we won't have to dig up this um, because of uh, burst water pipe or, or whatever um, close down the road. So we're looking for grant funding for both of those projects. Um, we're, we're, we'll be going for that hopefully um, this spring we'll be putting an application in. So um, the hope is and it seemed like under the MVP program at least for this drainage um, they, they do want to see their projects constructed. So um, they do take that into consideration when they're um, looking at grant applications. So um, whether it happens necessarily next year or it gets pushed for some reason, I, I really 
think there's a good chance of this happening and a very good chance of this happening. And um, you never know what the future is going to hold, but um, I'm really hopeful for this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna make a plug at this point. Um, if you do have um, further questions or specific concerns about your property, please email uh, planning at easthamptonma.gov um, and we'll make sure to look at those questions in more um, specificity. Um, and also, um, so if you're interested um, in just remaining up to date about this program, um, you know, when we get funding, um, we may not always be able to do a mailing to every house on the street. So please sign up for the email list. We won't spam you. We are only use it for relationship for, for this project. Um, and, and the um, uh, sign up sheet would be on the program webpage, easthamptonma.gov slash MVP. And the only other spam that we may ask is um, possibly we'll be asking for letters of support for the for the grant that we will be going to for the construction. So um, those are always helpful to see that the, the community themselves want this project to happen. So that's the only spam we may be giving you guys um, in the in the coming days. Um, if that is um, all we have for questions, um, probably uh, call it a night. But um, again, feel free. Um, if you could get us things by March 1st, we'd re really appreciate it. Um, if not, uh, just feel free to reach out to us. We do want this to be a project that your community um, is excited about and that works for your neighborhood, um, which is why we did the neighbors to your neighborhood. We wanna make sure that this is something that you guys want to see and that works for you guys in the future. So um, thank you for coming out tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, and hopefully we will be uh, seeing this project moving forward. Thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot. This is really cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing this. I already signed up for the <laughs> updates. Excellent. <laughs> I'm going to end the recording.